Does cold water immersion really result in fat loss? And if it does, by how much? Following my personal experience and observation, after several cold water immersions, I finally reached the answer. And in this video, I'm going to show you with numbers and a bit of logic and calculations how I got there. Hello everyone, for those of you who are new to this channel, welcome aboard. Here at Ice Mind Body, our mission is to construct the most extensive and informative video library on cold exposure and cold therapy. Our goal is to empower our audience to embark on an advance in their health journey. So why did I even get curious about it? Because following several months of intermittent fasting and a healthy keto diet, where I lost quite a bit of weight, my weight loss finally plateaued. Although I kept going on the same regime, I could not lose any more weight. That was uh, around the time that I started practicing long cold water immersions regularly. To put things in perspective, I was doing 30 minutes in around 6 to 8 degrees Celsius, which is 43 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit, every other day. After a few sessions and with everything else unchanged, my weight loss kick started again. Now, let's dive into the numbers and calculations uh, to understand the science behind cold water immersion and uh, its impact on fat loss. I did uh, a lot of research and read many papers around this topic. Although I could not find any compelling study on actual weight loss, but I was almost sure it had an effect. Being a mechanical engineer by background, I started looking at it from a physics perspective. I measured the increase in water temperature within the 30 minute period that I was in the top, which was around two degrees Celsius. The natural warming of the water without me in the top uh, within that 30 minute period was negligible compared to the two degree increase. Now, let's break down the heat transfer calculation from my body to the top, which is calculated as uh, this formula, where Q is the heat loss in kilocalorie, M is water mass in kilogram, which is 270 for my top, and C is the specific heat capacity of water, which is one. And delta T is the change in temperature in Celsius that we said was two degrees. Now, put them all together, the heat loss comes to around 540 kilocalorie for 30 minutes a day. This simple calculation helps us understand how our body expends energy during water immersion. Obviously, there are some simplifications, but you get the idea. Now, there is more to it than just the initial heat loss. After you leave your top, your whole body remains cold for a long time, especially after the 30 minute stay. Obviously, there are some simplifications, but you get the idea. Now, there is more to it than just this initial heat loss. After you leave the top, your whole body remains cold for a long time, especially after a 30 minute stay. In fact, I have to warm up uh, with a warm bath or sauna, otherwise it will take me all day uh, to warm up while I'm shivering. During that period, your body continues to spend energy to warm up. I'm not even considering that in this calculation, but it can be in fact considerable, especially for shorter immersions where you normally stay two or three minutes in the water and uh, experience a natural warm-up afterwards, which can take a while. This extended energy expenditure is an important aspect to consider when evaluating the impact of cold water immersion uh, on your overall metabolism. Now, this only highlights the short-term effect of cold water exposure. There is another side to this, which is an important, if not more, and that is the effect of cold water on brown fat activation and metabolism. 
Brown fat, also known as brown adipose tissue (BAT), plays a unique role in our body. The name brown fat comes from its distinctive color, uh, which is due to its high uh, concentration of mitochondria, the cell's energy factories. These mitochondria contain a protein called uncoupling protein 1, UCP1. This plays a crucial role in the thermogenetic, which means heat reduced producing properties of brown fat. It's, it's a specialized for energy expenditure and thermoregulation. It can contribute to overall energy expenditure and may play a role in weight management. It burns calories to generate heat, potentially helping to reduce excess stored energy in form of fat. While brown fat is more abundant in infant and young children, its quantity tends to decrease with age, especially with our current lifestyle, where most of us fully protect ourselves from cold. This is where cold exposure comes into play. Research on uh, brown fat has picked up significant attention in recent years due to its uh, potential implications for weight loss and uh, metabolic health. Now, cold exposure activates brown fat through a process known as thermogenesis. Here is how it works. Cold receptors in our skin and deeper tissues sense, sense a drop in temperature uh, when you're exposed to cold conditions. The sensory signals from these cold receptors are transmitted to the brain via the nervous system. In response to the cold, the brain's hypothalamus uh, activates the sympathetic nervous system specifically the release of norepinephrine. Norepinephrine binds to receptors on brown fat uh, cells, triggering a series of biochemical uh, reactions within these cells. This process increases the metabolic activity of brown fat cells, generating heat that is distributed throughout the body to raise overall body temperature and contract the, body, uh, the, the cold environment. But the story doesn't end here. The understanding is that the, the, the more brown fat uh, is activated and built in should result in uh, less white fat accumulation. Also, it is possible for white fat cells to undergo a process called browning or beiging. During browning, white fat cells take on characteristics similar to brown fat cells. This can occur through various mechanisms, including exposure to cold temperatures. In summary, cold exposure triggers a cascade of uh, physiological responses that lead to activation of brown fat. This activation in turn helps the body generate heat, maintain a stable uh, core temperature when exposed to cold condition and potentially contribute to energy expenditure and weight management by burning calories stored in form of fat and glucose. So what's the bottom line here? Cold water immersion can indeed have a positive impact on our metabolism and it may help with uh, weight management. But remember, it's just one piece of the puzzle and it should be combined with a balanced diet and a regular physical activity for best results. While it's not a magic uh, solution for weight loss, it can be a valuable tool in your health journey. So go ahead and embrace the cold. If you would like to expand your knowledge on cold exposure, you can watch these other videos here. Stay cool and stay healthy. Until next time.